Well, how many of you sent, uh, got the uh, word of inspiration that I, I emailed today? I emailed it to you. Uh, the on, it's, it's a psalm, actually, it's a psalm. And I also sent another one with music behind it. And uh, so you got that one. But I'm going to read it again because uh, uh, it, it's, uh, I'm talking about loving God. So I woke up, this, I wrote that this morning at 6.30. And uh, at 6.30, our little lady, Foxy, our Yorkie, uh, had to go to the restroom, so it's 6.30, so I know when she need to go, she does that little shaking. That's less, she said, Dad, I need to go. So I got up and carried her to the utility room. There's a pad there, and she did her thing, and we got back in bed, and uh, I laid there, and, and I just laid there quietly and said, Lord, there's some things in my heart. You know, inside your heart, there's all kinds of things, and I've been releasing these things, and, and a psalm came to me. A psalm. Since I'm talking about love, uh, this is talking about love here. And it goes, I am sure of the air that I breathe. We'll continue. So I will live on. I am sure for your love for me, therefore, I will never be alone. My heart longs for you for what you have done for me. Your love cannot be explained by any man, for it is deeper than the sea. When I rise up in the morning to face the errands of the day, you have already prepared my steps ahead to keep me safe along the way. I remember the time when my life was confused and torn apart. I went down to the altar and gave to you, Lord, my broken heart. My life was changed that day, and I knew that I was forgiven. You gave me a new outlook on life, and it gave me a reason for living. My greatest desire in life is to know you, Lord, and to follow you. I have loved you for many years and will always do what you want me to do. Who am I that you are mindful of me, that you created me in your image? You raised me up and gave me your divine love, favor, and privilege. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart because you love me so. My life is in your hands, and thank you for making me complete and whole. I went down the memory lane of the past, and I saw what I used to be. But I looked into the mirror of your word, and I can see what you see. I am a new creation, a new man, and made righteous by your blood. I am your child created in Christ Jesus and full of your love. I see myself as an overcomer, strong and mighty because of you, the greater one. I am seated with you at the Father's right hand in heaven as a born-again son. I am special, loved, forgiven, watched over, renewed, and on solid ground. I have been set free from sickness and disease, and because of you, I'm no longer bound. Yes, I am sure of the air that I breathe will continue so I will live on. Yes, I am sure for your love for me, therefore I will never be alone. Thank you for your word so that I can really live the way you want me to. These are the thoughts that are in my heart because I love you. Isn't that beautiful? You know, uh, you too, if you wake up one morning, God will talk to you too. He'll give you some. The Bible says he'll give you psalms and hymns. He'll, he'll speak to you. And you can use those to bless others. But, so we, last time we talked about loving God and others. We talked about loving others, but I'm going to talk about loving God. Uh, you spell love, L-O-V-E, and just very quickly, love is long for, how do, how do we love God? L is you long after him. O, you observe him. V, you value him. E, you enjoy him. So you long after God. You observe God, you value Him, and then you can enjoy Him. What does it mean to, to long after? Now, I know there's no way. I sent them a lot of scriptures. There's no way I'm going to all those scriptures. So we go a little ways in that, and then uh, we can only handle so much, and then you'll come back and get part two or whatever. You know, long after Psalms 42, verse 1, the Living Bible as the deer pants for water, so I long for you, O God. 
I thirst for God, the living God. Isn't that beautiful? Psalms, as the deer pants for water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. The word long, when you long for something, it's, it's, it, you feel a strong desire, a craving for. You have a desire, a craving for. Uh, uh, to yearn for, to hunger for, to thirst for. You know, you will do and have what you long for, what you desire. The Bible says, if I desire, if I desire, desire myself in his word, He'll give me the desires of my heart. And, and uh, Psalm 63 and verse 1, O God, thou art my God. I, I noticed it say, it didn't say our God. I take it personally. O God, you are my God. You are my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see your power and your glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus why will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. You know what's really sad, but maybe you know people that has no desire for the word. The most important thing in our life is to know God, and the best way to know God is to read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, John, and follow Jesus. It's amazing how much we can learn about God just spending time in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, John, and how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good. So we know that God is doing good. We know that God is the healer. That's how we know God. We can't know God. Now, when I met her, when I met Charlotte in, in 74, when I met her, I, I really didn't know her. I met her, acquainted with her at Skateland, and she walked to the door, and uh, someone brought her there to meet me, and she walked to the door and told Wilma, said, I want to meet that guy right there. She had me already pointed out. See, that was gone every day, and we met. Well, I really didn't know her. I loved what I saw. To me, I saw her. I mean, I was just amazed. I'm thinking, wow, she is nice. I want to get to know her. And I had the privilege because she couldn't skate, never been skating. And, and so, therefore, I could skate. I could skate backwards, forwards, sideways. I could do all that. And I figured, well, now it's a good opportunity to get at least get close to her. And, and so I, I skated for it, and I had her in front of me trying to show her how to skate. I loved it. I loved it. But the more, it, it didn't take long for me to get to know her, and I get to know her by conversation. Let her talk to me, and I get to know, and she gets to know me. And that would be 50 years ago. We married coming up May. And, and so, therefore, uh, it, it's about God. To get to know God, to love God, is to know Him. To love God is to know Him. You can only know Him, only not only in His... But see, a lot of people know God in, the, in His presence. They spend time in His presence. But you got to, He's got to talk to you. See, God, people say, well, God never talked to me. He, he, he just don't talk to me like He's talked to you. Open your Bible. He'll talk to you. He's full of the Word. It's full of the Word. Just open He'll tell you as you read it, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I will take sickness and disease away from the midst of thee. I will heal you and, and of all your wounds. I will never leave you. Enough. See, God's talking to us. And the more we know about God, the more we love God. We talk about how do we love God, we begin to long after God. Let me give you a checklist. And let's just check up on ourselves and see if we really love God, we, we, you, you may give you a little checklist. It's quiet right here. Let me give you a checklist. This is for all of us to see if we really love God. Number one, we have a desire for more of God and less of self. God is more important than ourselves. 
Now, you can say amen in this message. Amen. What amen means. Say, now, the more you say amen, the, the shorter I'll go. Now, if you don't say amen, I can go a long time. I'll wait for it. Can I buy an amen, somebody? Okay. <laughs> now, we have a desire for more of God and less of self. We want to please God more than, that's in one, number one. We want, we want to please God more than ourselves. Number two, we are spending more time in church and with church family. Okay, thank you, thank you. We're spending more time in church, and that's a checklist. It's not for you to get offended. If, I, if, if, if the shoe fits, just wear it. Now, we are spending more time in church and with church family. How many people do you know? A lot of people don't go to church like they used to. Well, you love God more, hopefully. Number three, we are not in a hurry to leave a church service. That's a good sign. You're so involved, you're so hooked up with the Word of God, and you're excited about the Word of God. When it gets to the end, you get depressed. You want to go on? No, I, I'm not, I don't go home. Give me the Word. Give me the Word. Amen. And, and, and when the service, when we say amen, you're gone. I mean, you don't take time to tell somebody bye. You're out the door, honey. You're gone. Gone, man, gone. Well, you're at church. I didn't see you. Well, you was in a blur. You went so fast, didn't see you. <laughs> Another uh, checklist, <laughs> we love God. or we, are, we have a strong desire for prayer, worship, and praise. A strong desire for that. These are symptoms of loving God. Now, if I don't have a desire to pray, I don't have a desire to worship, a desire to pray, uh, uh, worship God, uh, do I really love God? Uh, number six, we hate sin, and we're not put up with it. That's a sign you love God. You hate sin. You don't hate the sinner, but you hate sin. Number seven, we will give more of ourselves and our money to God. All, all of you tithe, probably 75 to 80, maybe 85% of those people tithe. That's a sign that you do love God when you give. See, God doesn't want your money. He wants your heart. If he's got my heart, he's got my money. Number eight, things in our life that are holding us back will begin to drop off and die right in our presence. Amen. Number nine, we are in deep love with God and people and nothing or no one will cause us to go the other way. This is a checklist. Very simple, not complicated. Holiness is evident in our lifestyle, our tongue, our mind, our walk, and our talk. It's the evidence that we love God. When we love God, we don't hang around people that tell dirty jokes. Amen. Now, uh, I, I was a machinist for 13 years. And uh, as a Christian way, I went to machines before I got into the ministry. And everybody knew me. They knew I'm a Christian. I don't throw it at them. I'm, they just know. They'll know you by your lifestyle, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself. And sometimes if they have a lunch period, about 30 minutes lunch period, they go to a bunch of men, go to the table and sit down. I went over one time, sat down, and I got to thinking, okay, I won't be sitting here no more. They began to tell some dirty jokes, so I, did, I got up just forget about it. Forget that. But I, I did witness to people and uh, let them, and I got a few people born again too while I was talking to them back in those days. But they saw my lifestyle. They, they knew that I was a Christian. Uh, one time I went to the tool crib to get a tool for my machine. It was dull. While I was gone, one guy put a Playboy book on my turret lay, my machine, while I was off. I came back. There it was, right there, right there in my eyes. It grieved me. I didn't get up and throw it down. Who did that? I just picked it up, just kind of gently wanted it up, put a trash can, just kept working. That's when people get mad at you when you don't get phased on that stuff. Look, look, dogs will bark. Cats will meow. Cows will moo. 
sinners with sin. That's what they do. So they have to be delivered from that so they can, and yet Christians sometimes you can miss it. But when you do, aren't you glad for 1 John 1, 9? If you confess your sins, God loves you so much. But anyway, you just can't, uh, and I found out who did it, and I went to him, I said, why'd you do that? I said, well, he said, well, and he, now, now, now to get me that, listen, listen, he is singing in a gospel group, the guy that did that. His name was Levi, not, not, not Cherise Levi. <laughs> His name was Levi. I said, Levi, you sing in a gospel group and out there ministering in music, and you put that on my... He said, well, that's, he said, God made women to look at. I said, man, you are crazy. If you have a wife, God made her for you to look at, but you don't, everybody looking at her. And I said, I said, you know what? I wouldn't go across the street to hear your group sing because you're a hypocrite. That was enough of that conversation. So another thing, number 11, we don't get offended when we are challenged to do the word. That's how you love God. Don't you like it when it's straight? You missed a bad time not to jump on that one. Amen, amen. I mean, do you want to hear the gospel, pure gospel, nothing but the truth, so help me? You want to hear it that way? You mean just candy coat it? No. You want to hear it like it is. I want to hear it like it is. Jesus told some guys, he said, you are of your father the devil, and the deeds of your father you will do. Call some of them hypocrites. I ain't called you a hypocrite, have I? <laughs> I'm not playing on it. Matthew 22, verse 37 is a key note right here. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Let me talk about loving God. Love is the object of attachment. Love is devotion. Love is strong affection. Love is enthusiasm. Love is adoration. Love is admiration. A longing to be with someone. Let me share this. I don't mind. You might have heard this before. Let me share this again. It fits right here. Now, I, when I met her, I needed a companion. I needed a woman. I, I, I was a woman, but I was actually dating somebody. And her name was Peggy. And, and I was going to marry her. I felt like I loved her. I think it was mostly because I was lonely, maybe. And I, I, I thought it was love. Well, the night I met her, my goodness, I'm thinking, wow, who's Peggy? After I met her. Matter of fact, I told this friend of mine before I went roller skating, I said, I don't know, but I said, I'm going to marry Peggy. I'm going to marry Peggy. If God, I don't advise you to do that, but I said, if God don't want me to marry Peggy, he's going to have to stop it because I'm going to marry her. And that night, that night we met, something happened. I had a strong feeling toward her. I mean, love at first sight, I don't know. But it was supernatural to me. And, and so uh, I, we went out to uh, our first date. We went to hear the uh, a gospel group, uh, Andre Crouch's family. And, anyway, on the third or fourth night, I took her home, and we sat in the car. And, and I, I'm the kind of guy, if she felt the same way I felt, we'll go for it. If not, I want to leave her. I don't want to be hurt. I don't, I don't know part of being wounded. Nobody's hurting than someone. You, if, if, uh, if you break it with somebody, they love you. It, it's, it's tough. And I, I remember she sitting right here, and, and uh, I'm in the driver's seat. And I said, uh, Charlotte, I said, uh, I need to talk to you. You've got to be bold to do this, especially the third night. I, I said, I said I, I've got these strong feelings towards you. And, and, and I... I, I 
I feel like I'm falling in love with you. It's so quick. And I said, if you, if you have the same feelings like me, you feel the same way I do, I said, we'll continue. If not, I'd rather say goodbye now. Something like that. And she said, she got on the floor and begged me. She said, no, I feel the same way you do. <laughs> No, she did, she did, she said, she did say this, she said, yes, I feel the same way you do. And that's it, that's, that was it, now that's history. And, and we met on March the 30th, and they got married seven weeks later, been 50 years, so that was God. And someone said, and she was 18, I was 26. And someone said, you robbed a cradle. I said, no, I didn't rob the cradle, God did. Amen. And so then we, we both just, that's how we start, started. And, and you have to, I, I think dating is not good. Just dating, I think it's very dangerous to do that. You need to, uh, date the one you're going to marry. That's the best way. Oh, my, 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 how do I get out of this? I didn't want to go that way. Is, uh, to have a longing is to have a passion. Passion is an intense, driving, or overmastering feeling or conviction. A strong lacking desire for a devotion or some activity, object, or conception. Another one, a desire or deep interest, love, and affection need to be passionate toward the love of God. How do I love God? Back to love, L-O-V-E. Hmm. If I walk in love, I have long life. To have long life, oh, I've got to be obedient. If I walk in obedience, V, I'll have the victory. If I walk in victory, I'll be established. Well, how do I love God? How do I nurture that love? How do I, what you feed will grow what you starve or die? Do you know that? What you feed will grow. And your love for God will grow. The more we love God, the more we want to love God. Well, how do I feast on loving God? I've got, what do I, I've got to long for, number one, I've got to long for his word. I've got to long for his Presence. I got a long for his will, and I have a long for him. That means I love his word, I love his presence, I love his will, and I love him, not money, not pleasure, not the desires of the flesh, but I love him. Like I said two weeks ago, the Lord told me on a Sunday morning when I came to church, he said, don't teach them what they want to hear Teach them what I want them to hear, hear. He said to me, I am looking for people to love me. I want people to love me. I know there's couples in, in life, everyday life, a couple go together and the guy falls madly in love with this girl. But the girl doesn't love him. Now he's heartbroken. Or he dates a girl and she, she loves him, but he doesn't love her. His heart broken. God loves us. He wants us to love him. And Jesus said out of his own mouth, he that loveth me is he that keepeth my commandments. Or he that loves me is he that will obey my word, that will do my word, that will act on my word, that will love my word. Why should we have a longing for God? I'll tell you why. Because he is faithful and true. He's faithful and true. You'll never find nobody more faithful than God. He is faithful and true. He is merciful. He is love. And he is gracious. 
Glory to God. And he loves me. We cannot comprehend the love that he has for us. Greater love than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. All he requires us to do is to love him. And if I love him, I will obey him, walk after him, desire him. That's what love is. Thank you for joining us at Living Word Church. Living Word Church McDonough is located at 185 Tunis Road, McDonough, Georgia, 30253. In-person services are held Sundays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Children's services are available every service for ages birth through 12 years old. If you would like to financially support this ministry, you can do so by using the Give Now button on our website at livingwordchurch.faith or by texting the word GIVE and the amount to 770-212-9591. Your financial donation will help us continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. To find out more about Living Word Church, check out our website at livingwordchurch.faith. Thank you again for watching. See you next week.